Okay, in this video, we are going to design and build a simple common emitter amplifier that's a one transistor gain stage audio amp. We'll be using the four resistor bias configuration so the gain of the amplifier is independent of the beta or HFE of the transistor because we'll be using negative feedback. Now the transistor we're going to use is a 2N2222 and these are the four bias resistors that we're going to calculate. This one's RL, that's a load resistor. This one's RE, that's the emitter resistor. And these two resistors are the bias voltage divider, which will set the Q point or the idle point of the transistor. So the Q point of the collector will be 1 half VCC, so the output will swing above and below 1 half VCC. And the current through the transistor will be 1 half the collector saturation current. So we'll have to set a few wanted parameters. So the input impedance of this amplifier will be 10K, and the gain will be. 5, the voltage gain will be 5, so 1 volt peak to peak in will get 5 volts peak to peak out. And we'll power the whole circuit with 12 volts. So we'll get into how we could calculate the four bias resistors using rule of thumb, and we'll assume some parameters, and we'll be using Ohm's law and some transistor rules to build this circuit. Okay, here's a schematic diagram of my common emitter amplifier that I built on my breadboard. So we have to calculate the values of the four bias resistors. Now first we have to determine the collector idle current. Now all transistors leak between the collector and base, so we have leakage current flowing in this direction. So we want to make the collector current greater than the leakage current. So we'll make the collector current 1 milliamp, so we'll have 1 milliamp flowing in this leg. So we'll have 1 milliamp flowing through the load resistor, through the transistor, and through the emitter resistor RE. Now next we have to determine the voltage drop across RE, and that's usually 10 to 20% of VCC. So we'll pick 10%, so that'll be 1.2 volts will be dropped across RE with 1 milliamp flowing through it. So now we could actually calculate the value of RE. So it's 1.2 volts divided by 1 milliamp equals 1.2K. So now the value of R1, this value here, will be 10 times RE. So R1 equals 10 times RE equals 12K. So now we know the values of those two resistors. Now we could calculate the voltage across R1. It's 1.2 volts plus 0.6 volts. So we have 1.2 volts at the emitter. And we got 0.6 volts. That's the diode drop of the transistor. So we have 1.8 volts across R1. So we know the voltage to cross it. We know the value. We could calculate the current through R1, which would be the same current through R2, because it's a series circuit. So the current through R1 will be 1.8 volts divided by 12K. That'll give us 150 microamps. Now the voltage across R2 is 12 volts minus 1.8 volts. And if we divide it by 150 microamps, we'll get a, we'll get a resistor of 68K. So now we know the value of R2. Now the voltage drop across the load resistor will be 12 volts minus 1.2 volts. So we'll have 10.8 volts between this point, the emitter, and in the VCC. So we want to share that voltage between the transistor and the resistor, so we'll split that in half. So when we look down here, we'll have 12 volts minus 1.2 volts divided by 2 will give us 5.4 volts across RL. So 5.4 volts across RL divided by 1 milliamp flowing through it will give us 5.4K. And that's not a preferred value, so we'll use 5.6K. So those are our four resistors. There's one, two, three, four. So we'll, we'll put that in our circuit. Now the RN, input impedance, of this amplifier will be R1, basically R1 here, and it's about 12K. So it's approximate because it's actually R1 in parallel with R2, in parallel with small r RN, which is RE reflected back to the base. But it's going to be around the R1 value, so we'll, we'll take it as 12K. And the gain of this amplifier will be RL divided by RE, equals 4.7, which is close to 5, which we, we wanted. So there's our four resistors, and we'll plug them into the circuit, and we'll check the operation of our common emitter amplifier. Okay, I have my scope connected to my amplifier. I'm feeding an input signal of, of 1 volt peak to peak at 1 kilohertz. And you can see the output there, it's 4.6 volts peak to peak, so we have a gain of 4.6. And we, get, we calculated 4.7, so that's pretty close. So I'll increase the input until we get clipping, until we run out of headroom and we'll see if it's symmetrical because we want to have our output swing above and below half VCC 
So we'll take up the input and we can see the bottom there starting to clip. We'll keep on going and there's the top starting to clip. So it's, it's not too bad, it's pretty symmetrical. So we can accept that. Now if your circuit doesn't do what you see here, if it's unsymmetrical, then you have to do some fine tuning. Okay, after we've calculated our resistor values for the four bias resistors, the calculated values will not be the same as your standard resistor values in your parts bin. So as you apply those standard values to your circuit, your Q operating point might not be centered. So we have to do some fine tuning. So we could, we could replace R2 with a potentiometer. So we calculated R2 as 68K, so we could put a 100K pot in there. Now we could adjust R2 until our, our DC voltage at the collector becomes one half VCC or six volts. So now our output will swing above and below half VCC or six volts. Also when we hook up to the scope, we can adjust R2 until we get symmetrical clipping. Then, then we know our circuit is centered. Now the, the signal that appears across RE is our negative feedback to our circuit. The negative feedback will lower the gain, but it will increase our bandwidth, it will increase the stability, and it will give us lower distortion. So to get more gain out of the circuit, we could decrease the negative feedback by putting a capacitor across this resistor, so we'll shunt away some of the AC feedback, and our gain will go up. But as our gain goes up, our bandwidth will go down, the stability will go down, and we'll get more distortion. So I usually put a resistor in series with the capacitor across RE to, to get more gain out of the circuit. So you could use this as a template to build your common emitter amplifier, and then play around with different values to get the circuit to work the way you want it to.